Welcome to our last tutorial on 2015 Croc 2 2015 booklet. Our last tutorial on this booklet. All right, so let us uh, zoom in and then let's get it going. So we have a 25 year old patient uh, during self examination detected a tumor in the upper external quadrant of the right mammary gland. On palpation, it is painless, dense, mobile growth, two centimeters in diameter is detected in the gland. No changes in the peripheral lymph nodes are observed. On ultrasound, in the upper external quadrant of the right mammary gland, there is a space occupying lesion of an increased echogenicity, increased echogenicity in this size. What is the most likely diagnosis? What is the most likely diagnosis? And over here, we are going to go in with fibroadenoma or a fibrous adenoma. And a fibrous adenoma is simply a non-cancerous breast tumor that most often occurs in a young I mean, it occurs in young women. Usually, the lump feels firm, smooth, or rubbery lump, I mean, rubbery, uh, in the chest, and it is well-defined. The shape is well-defined. It's usually also painless, and of course, it moves easily when touched. It moves easily when touched. That's why over here, we are going in with a fibrous adenoma or fibroadenoma, fibro adenoma and i believe we've made distinguishing features between a cancer and a fibrous adenoma all right so the answer here is a a 20 year old woman complains of feeling of feeling of air shortage lingering dull pain in the heart area irritability objectively there's a the general condition is satisfactory satisfactory Heart rate is liability. BP is 130, 60. ECG reveals disruption of rate polarization process. So what wave are they talking about when they talk about rate polarization? Who can tell me? What T wave? T wave. T wave. Awesome. Awesome. Now the patient is diagnosed with a somatoform autonomic dysfunction of cardiac type. Uh, somatoform autonomic dysfunction specify the condition of this uh, patient treatment patient treatment so yes even though they, they are saying that this person is having a, a somatoform autonomic dysfunction which by now you should know what a somatoform autonomic dysfunction is all about if you've forgotten please do well to revise on them but basically we are talking about some small uh, how do you call it cardiac sort of symptoms that is one word the other preceded by the small effort even though there's no uh, pathological process happening but sometimes you can see some cardiac uh, uh, symptoms present and this is actually sort of different from a neuroasthenic or uh, effort syndrome which we discussed in some previous time uh -huh. so Basically, this is different from it. So basically, this patient is in a satisfactory condition, and that means that we can uh, look at this patient on an OPD basis. That is outpatient department basis. Outpatient department basis. That's over here. Your answer is C. Your answer is C. A 70-year-old patient consulted a doctor about arithmetic cardiac activity. Anytime I hear of arithmetic, the person can, that comes to my mind is Uche. And there's dyspnea. Objectively, BP is 150-90, extra systole, arrhythmia 10 to 12 beats per minute, left ventricular systolic dysfunction, ejection fraction rate is 42. Which of the following anti arithmetic drug should be given? And of course, we've talked about this like a dozen times. So over here, we are looking at what? Amiodarone. 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 Exactly. Amiodarone. So your answer here is B. Your answer here is B. 
A 25-year-old patient complains of acute pain in his right side that is irradiating to the right thigh and crunch, crunch, crunch. The patient claims also to have a frequent urination with urine which resembles a meat slopes. Anytime I hear of meat slopes, I remember uh, Afon's meat slopes. The patient has no previous history of this condition. There is cost, there is what cost costal vertebral angle. This is costal, not cost, costal vertebral angle tenderness on the right. What is the most likely diagnosis? Again, when I see meat slopes, I remember Afon's, and so therefore I am going in with what urolithiasis. Urolithiasis, we've talked about this, so I don't want to. Talk plenty about some of these things, but usually mid slopes or localization of pain and the mid slopes like urine and a positive costovertebral angle tenderness is simply a sign of kidney stones or stones inside the kidney. And therefore, your answer is what? Urolithiasis. Urolithiasis. So E is your answer. A 38-year-old man works within the range of ionizing radiation, ionizing radiation at a routine. So before that, when people, people who work with ionizing radiation, what cells are mostly likely to be damaged first? Who can tell me? Which cells? Which blood cells? Uh-huh. Which blood, blood cells? cells? Come again. No, 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 the lymphocyte, the lymphocyte, the lymphocyte, the lymphocyte. please take note. Sorry, sir. Now, at a routine medical examination, he presents with no problems. In the blood, RBC is 4.5, uh, hemoglobin is 80, which is quite low, WBC is 2.8, thrombocyte is 30. Decide if this person can work with the source of ionizing radiation. Decide if this person can work with the source of ionizing uh, radiation. Already they've told you that we are having what? WBC to be low. We are having HB to be low. We are having thrombocyte to be what? To be low. All of these things are all low. And so therefore working with a radio, uh, this is because the person has been working with the radioactive what? Substances. So therefore, this person will uh, uh, demand an urgent what sort of treatment, if you ask me. And so, therefore, we have to take the person away from the sources of what? Ionizing radiation and, of course, treat the person as well. So, it's not advisable for us to ex keep, for us to keep exposing the person to these what? Ionizing what? Radiation because everything is going down and eventually you can have what we call a pancytopenic uh, condition in this patient. So over here, decide if this can work with a source of ionizing radiation. Your answer, is what, your answer here is what? Is E. Your answer here is E. We, this person needs urgent treatment. So we have to take the person out of this condition. Take the person out of this condition. All right. So your answer here is what? Is E. A maternity patient a maternity patient breastfeeding for one and a half weeks, one and a half weeks has attended a doctor. She considers the onset of, the, of her disease to be when, to be when proportional breast engorgement occurred. Okay. The mammary glands are painful. Body temperature is 36.6. Expression of the breast milk is hindered. What is the most likely diagnosis expression of milk is hindered so what comes to mind and this person is one and one to five weeks so what comes to mind is what stasis stasis comes to mind stasis comes to mind because there's no really temperature for us to see we are having maybe mastitis or whatever it is no we are having what stasis we are having what stasis so uh lactostasis Lactostasis. So the answer is here is A. It's A. All right. A 12 year old girl complains of general weakness, rise of body temperature up to 
there is pain and swelling of the knee joint and the feeling of uh, cardiac disruption. The child had tonsils three weeks ago. So again, when you begin to look at swelling of the joint and the uh, heart problems, as a result, and again, with the history of tonsillitis, what comes to your mind basically is what? Rheumatic what? Fever. Rheumatic fever. We've discussed these things. What comes to mind was rheumatic what? Fever. But let's continue reading. They said the joints are swollen. Local rates of temperature is observed. Mobility is reduced. Heart sounds weakened. Extrasystole is present. Cardiac apex systolic, uh, systolic noise can be auscultated which is not conducted to the left axillary region, ES, ESR is that, uh, CRP, that is C-reactive protein plus two, and again, antistreptolysin O titer are 400. What is the most likely diagnosis? Again, this one here is what? Acute rheumatic oh, fever. Okay. Good. Usually because of what? The strep infection. Because of the strep infection. So your answer here is what? Is A. So if you are enjoying this, remember to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any video that we post over here. Okay. A 60-year-old man has a diet consisting of unvaried food staples, mostly cereals, potato, pasta, few vegetables and little fats, especially animal fat. Now, during examination, he complains of D duration of his twilight vision. Guys, whatever they are telling you, forget about them. Your clue here is what? Or what will help you with diagnosis? What? Deterioration of twilight vision. Twilight vision. That means we are talking about what? A night vision. Night vision. And usually what controls night vision has to do with what? With your rod or your rod cells, if I should put it that way. The rod cells con con is... Uh, the rod cells, we have cones and in the rods. The rod cells are responsible for what? For dim light vision or night vision or twilight vision. Basically, that is it. Then the cones is responsible for what? For daylight vision. And usually, when talking about deficiency of these things, I mean, these uh, receptors being deficient, I mean, not working properly, we're definitely talking about what? Vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A deficiency. And vitamin A deficiency is the same as what? Retinal acetate. Retinal acetate. So your answer here is what? It's A, retinal acetate. All right. A 25-year-old patient was hospitalized in a surgical inpatient unit with intermuscular phlegmon of the right thigh on the sixth day from the onset of the disease. Abscess formed under the fascia latter was diagnosed. So again, if the abscess has been what? Been formed. Abscess. Sorry. Was diagnosed, laced, and widely drained. Necrotic tissues were removed. Antibiotic therapy with cephalosporins and third generation uh, fluoroquinolones was prescribed as well as immune corrective and detoxification infusion therapy, diuresis stimulation, UV radiation of blood and plasmapheresis. What is the main component of sepsis prevention? So they've told you about this whole thing. We're having immune correction. We're having antibiotic. We're having uh, detoxification, we have what surgical invasion, but the question is, what is the main component of the sepsis prevention? What comes to mind? What is the main component? Don't forget, we're having abscess, abscess was diagnosed and it was laced and widely drained, necrotic tissues removed. So, what comes to mind? Surgical intervention comes to your mind. Surgical interventions comes to your mind. Of course, the antibiotics are all needed for prevention of all of these things. But the main component of the prevention of the sepsis in this patient who was hospitalized was the removal or the drainage of the what of the abscess and the removal of the necrotic tissue. And this 
is a surgical what procedure. So that is the main component of the sepsis prevention. So what it means is that if the sepsis, the abscess was there and then the necrotic tissues were all there and you're giving antibiotics, it will still, yes, it will work. I mean, but the problem might still be lingering around. Okay, so the best one that helped this patient was the fact that they intervened surgically. So your answer here is what is D, surgical invasion or intervention. An RH negative woman, an RH negative woman with 32 week long term of pregnancy. Before I continue, anytime we talk about RH negative woman, what can start coming to your head? Who can tell me? What can start coming to your head? Even before we go to the question. Oh, who knows? Exactly. Exactly. RH hemolytic disease or RH incompatibility will come to mind. Uh -huh. And we've talked about this in our previous presentation. So please do well to watch the videos as well. So our, an RH negative woman with 32 week long term of pregnancy, pregnancy has been examined. Okay. It was observed that RH antibodies titer had increased four times within the last two weeks. Uh -huh. And was one is to what? Uh, 64. That means that this person has given birth before and that uh, necessitated the, uh, the RH antibody what, production in this woman. What it means is that subsequent babies could have a problem. But let's not jump to conclusion. Let's look at what is being, here, uh, is being said here. They said the first two pregnancies uh -huh, ended in antenatal death caused by hemolytic what disease caused by hemolytic what disease the first two pregnancies but usually what i know is that the first pregnancy normally come out very good no problem but the second and third you know they have a problem but over here they said the first two pregnancies ended in the that means agglutination occurred which ended in what hemolytic disease so what tactics of pregnancy management should be chosen should be Chosen in this what the patient's already what 32 weeks of pregnancy. So over here, what we need to do is to give what is to do a preterm delivery, preterm delivery, preterm delivery. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, how do you call it? In this patient to help the baby, I mean the unborn uh, child. Okay, we do a pre uh, a preterm. Delivery, preterm delivery. So your answer here would will be C, preterm delivery, preterm delivery. All right. You shall give these people RHD, 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 which is just like we we'll react to it. I mean, we we'll neutralize whatever that is happening. Now, a two-year-old child has been suffering since birth from real occurring, recurring inflammatory diseases of the lungs, prurient pansinusitis, hearing deterioration, multiple cylindrical bronchoectasis. Okay. Uh, dextrocardia. Uh-huh. Ooh, I think someone was mentioning something about uh, Catadena syndrome. I think it's Nene or some, someone, one of you like that. Yes. So usually in Catadena syndrome too, we have uh, this dextrocardia present is observed in catagenic syndrome as well. Now, on biopsy, ultrastructural or, 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 or change of this <laughs> there is ultrastructural change of ciliated epithelium. What is the basis of the given? Uh, how do you call it? Syndrome, and of course, you know that for cilia to work usually properly, either it needs the right atmosphere to be able to work properly. And that's why people with this kind of problem with a cilia or a tick cilia, you can find them in catagena syndrome or even in the cystic fibrotic diseases. And then people having problem with what with a cilia, we call it cilia uh, dyskinesia. People, these kind of people suffer from this kind of you know troubles or problems. Okay, so over here. 
we are definitely, of course, the clue that is given to us here is the change in the cilia epithelium, the change in the cilia epithelium. And that's over here, we'll go in with what? The primary ciliary dyskinesia, primary ciliary, primary ciliary, which means that the cilia is dysfunctional. Cilia is dysfunctional. And, and over in this condition, is usually an autosomal recessive uh, genetic condition autosomal recessive condition which affect what the cilia and you know that in your respiratory membrane and stuff like that we have a lot of what cilia that is protecting us so imagine this cilia is defective what it means that any sort of dust any sort of bacteria any sort of microorganism that enters the place will get to be happy and be enjoying life over there which is not good for us as human beings and that is what this person is having what ray occurring or frequently having these inflammatory diseases of the lungs and the sinuses, the sinuses, and even the ear and things like that. So over here, we are looking at what? At D as our likely answer. D will be our likely answer. All right. A newborn infant, first labor, lasted for 26 hours. It's one day old, post-mature. Okay, body weight is 3,850, which is quite okay, even though slightly above, but quite okay. Body length is 52. Delivery was performed by applying obstetrical faucet in a sensipital presentation. Abga score is one over three, which is too small. The face is bluish pale, head is thrown back. Severe birth trauma is present. So this can help you. Birth trauma is present. The infant is excitable. Shrill cerebral scream is present. The eyes are half opened. Facial expression is attentive. Hyper, hyperesthesia, hypersthenia, readiness for convulsions are present. Leka has high, guys, look. So even if you do, can't remember any of these things, remember this particular one. Leka, which is what? Cerebrospinal fluid has high content of what? Erythrocyte. And we know, you and I know, or we've established that fact that red blood cells is not supposed to be seen in a CSF. This is supposed to be very clear. But for us to have erythrocyte present is a sign of bleeding. It is a sign of bleeding. And then there's even saying what there's lymphocytic cytosis, even is what is present. And with the lymphocytic cytosis being present too, it also has one thing I can also think about, which could be what a viral sort of what infection, isn't it? But over here, looking at the option here, we're looking at what the bleeding that is occurring, and which one is the commonest uh, bleeding that can affect a baby in this kind of cases, or that can have an effect in the CSF. Which one is the commonest? Who can tell me? Subarachnoid. 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 We have established this long before now. So you already know some of these things. All right. So over here, your answer is what is B, subarachnoid hemorrhage. All right. So you can find more of these on our Medent website, medentweb.com. I will put a link in the description so that at the end, you can just check it out to solve more questions and practice more. So let's continue. A 74-year-old patient visited a urologist with complaints of pain above the pubis, complaints of pain above the pubis, and inability to urinate for eight hours. At home, he had taken antispasmodics and had a warm bath, but no improvement occurred. Even before that, you already know when you talk about the, these things in a bit, you know, you wouldn't have your differentials at the back of your mind. So it helps. Now here the abdomen is soft, painful above the pubis. Dullness of percussion sound is observed above the pubis. Muffin or uh, pastanaski punch sign is negative. That's the ghost of vertebral tenderness, right? It's kind of what's negative. And we know that when that one is also positive, apart from the fact that it can have a, it can be a problem with 
kidney stones, it can also be a problem with what pyelonephritis. I think that one we have to establish these sort of things. So, what is the what condition is this patient what having? And we have established uh, the differential diagnosis over here. So, over here, you obviously know that this is what an acute urinary what retention, acute urinary what retention, acute urinary you know, retention. And I think uh, if I'm correct, if my memory serves me right, uh, Dr. Winifred asked a question or bless, uh, or Bridget, one of you, asked a question about uh, the paradoxical uh, uh, scurria and the, the acute urinary retention and things like that. And I believe we discussed about it. People came in with some uh, valuable information like that. Christopher and Co. you process a lot of things. I can remember all those moments. So please do well to watch those videos for the differences between some of these things. And of course, with acute urinary retention, what is the likely cause in a man? Who can tell me? Old age, the likely cause of acute. Prostate. Come again. Prostate. Prostate. Prostate, prostate cancer. Prostate. Uh, 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 or BPH, uh, yes, hyperplasia. All of these things are all there. We know all of these things, so no need to stress ourselves. So this acute urinary retention, all right. A 37-year-old patient has been undergoing treatment of discogenic lumbrosacra uh, radiculitis for a month. Again, you wouldn't know this condition. We've talked about this condition like millions million times. There's a skin numbness observed at the lateral surface of the right lower extremity. The Achilles jerk is absent. MRI of the lumbar spine revealed intervertebral discs. Uh, prolapse, of course. There's a prolapse of this intervertebral vertebra at L5 to the first sacra vertebra. Now, Choose the further tactics for patient treatment. This one, no need for me to stress my hand, I mean, my head over it. Definitely, you are going to do what? A surgical extraction of the disc, a surgical what? Uh, extraction of the intervertebral disc. This one, we already know. So, the answer is what? It's a, you already know what? Lambosacra, radiculitis, you know, all of these things. All right. Guys, we are doing, doing revision, okay? A 40-year-old patient complains of constant pain in the lumbar spine and a significantly reduced mobility. Again, you already know what is in your head. You know this answer already, even before I continue. The patient has been suffering from this condition for the last seven years since pain appeared first in the sacrum area. Oh, making it easy. Look at the x-ray. Ankylosis of the sacroiliac articulation Significant narrowing of the intervertebral joint uh, fissures of the lumbar vertebra and calcification. Guys, what is your answer? Quick. Your answer is what? Ankylosis. Ankylosis. Exactly. And my favorite term, term that they normally use is what? The bamboo. Exactly. Bamboo. All right. A seven year old child became ill. After, sorry, became ill again two weeks after he had tonsillitis. Two weeks after he had tonsillitis. Who can tell me one of the complications of tonsillitis? Two. Who can tell me one? Glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis. Uh -huh. Glomerulonephritis. And what? We discussed one previously. Rheumatic, Rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever. Rheumatic exactly. Fever. So these complications comes to your mind. So when if these things come to your mind, you now check the next thing, what are they talking about? And you arrive at your answer. Now, there are the following complaints. Okay, so now this is going to direct your answer. Temperature rise is 38 degrees, hemorrhagic rash on the extremities, enlargement of the ankle joint, blood test, hemoglobin is 120, platelet is that, ESR is this, ESR, yeah. Urine, proteinuria, up to 0.7. Cylinders 5.6 in the field of vision, erythrocyte 8 to 10 in the field of vision. What mechanism of hemorrhagic syndrome is present in this case? But before that, what is your diagnosis in, 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 uh, in this patient? 
Glomerulonephritis. Good. So this is what post streptococcal glomerular nephritis rightly said. And what is the mechanism of action? Mechanism of action is what is the formation of what immune, immune complexes. complexes. As simple as A B C D. So this could be causing the hemorrhagic what syndrome in this what patient. So again, if you understand it, it's easy. No need to climb anything. No need to memorize anything. This is what vessel wall damage caused by immune complexes because you know your diagnosis. All right. So the answer is what is B is B. And then let me just take your mind backwards. Now, in, in, in respect to the rheumatic heart fever, what heart condition are we likely to see? Give me two. Uh, infective endocarditis. And what? Myocardite. And what? Mitra what? Stenosis. Don't forget that. Stenosis. Exactly. All right. This is just a revision. This is just a revision. A 48-year-old patient was delivered to a hospital in inpatient unit. That means admitted. With a urine, hey, uterine <laughs> bleeding that occurred after the two-week long delay of menstruation. Guys, look. 48 menstruation delay. What comes to your mind? What diagnosis comes to your mind? This is a type of what? Who can tell me? I'm looking for the answer. I'm looking for the diagnosis. What comes to your mind? People entering into menopause and bleeding. What condition is it? Oh. Come again. Exactly. We become thinking of some of these things. Okay. You can think of some of these things. Some of these things come to your mind. Come again. Endometrial issues. Good. So some of these things should be coming into your mind. So let's continue. Analysis states a uh, single birth examination of the uterine cervix with mirrors revealed no pathologies. On biomanual examination, the uterus is of normal size, painless, mobile, Appendages have no changes. Discharge is bloody and copious. What primary hemostatic measure should be taken? What primary hemostatic measure should be uh, taken to be taken in the given case? So what is the first thing that you need to do when you are suspecting somebody having what? Bleeding, just like I was saying, menopause, sort of what? Bleeding or menopause, sort of what condition? And we've talked about this. Uche has Practical. talked about this. Come again. No, for the blood, they need to like you carry tash. That's what I'm just talking about. Exactly. We talk about this. We talk about endometriosis. I can remember. We talk about endometriosis, differential. What we need to do. We talk about some of these things. So over here, you are going to do what the dilatation and what the curettage or the curettage. We can do all of these things to uh, verify our, our condition. And over here, you're looking for an abnormal uterine bleeding. Abnormal uterine bleeding. We could be what? A postmenopausal hemorrhage. We could be menorrhagia, uh, suspected malignancy, or pre malignant condition. All of these things can be possible causes why this patient is what? Is bleeding. Because either the person is entering menopause or the person is already in menopause, even though they didn't bring more information on that one, isn't it? So over here, you can do what? Your courage. We've done this before. We've done this before. So your answer here is what? It's A. It's A. All right. A 30-year-old woman complains of irregular painful menstruation. Irregular painful menstruation. Uh, pain irradiates to the rectum. Analysis states 10 year long infertility. On um, bimanual examination, that means this person has been married for 10 years now, technically, because it's when you have sex regularly for 10 years. Eh, what am I even saying? Please forgive me. People can be 15 years and still having sex, anyways. Now, on um, bimanual examination, the uterus is of normal size. Appendages on both sides are corded with restricted. Uh, morbidity, painful, there are dense, nodular, painful growth detected. Aha, uh -huh. 
The doctor is suspecting endometriosis. Endometriosis. Again, you can remember this question, Uche, because you ask a question like this. So, Uche, what's your answer? When do we use laparoscopy? Laparoscopy. Laparoscopy. You remember, abdomen, we talked about this. We talked patients. about this. Exactly. We talked about um, this. We talked about this. We talked about this. When we're talking about the quarantine. Remember. You say you forgot, eh? I said I said I forgot. Yes, you see, I can remember everything I, I discussed here. <laughs> I can remember the people who even asked that question. Nene contributed to this question too. Christopher also did. A 14-year-old girl complains of tooth caries. Caries. Hey, caries. The tooth should be filled. Analysis states that artificial mitral valve was installed two years ago due to mitral insufficiency. What antibacterial drugs should be prescribed to prevent infective endocarditis? Before that, what is the causative agent for infective endocarditis? Staphylococcal, Staphylococcal aureus, aureus, and so therefore you are going to use what? Amoxicillin, amoxicillin, amoxicillin. All right, so very broad antibiotic, anyways. So over here we are going with what? Amoxicillin. All right. A 30-year-old woman complains of infertility during her 10-year-long married life. Okay. Menstruation occurred since she was 14 and are irregular with delays up to a month and longer. Body mass. Already know your answer. Body mass excessive. Hesotism is present. That is hair growth. Uterine body is decreased in size, guys. Ovaries are increased in size, dense, painless, and mobile. Guys, what's your answer? Quick, 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 quick. Picos. Picos. Thank you. Picos. Picos. Stian Leventhal syndrome. We discussed this a lot. I think even in this 2015, now uh, we discussed a question like this. So please, if you are missing all of these explanations. Do well to watch the videos. Revise the videos. Very, very important. So over here, you are looking at what? At D. You are looking at D. All right. 